me. You're probably wondering how I got in this situation, or how any of this relates to camera reviews. Well, it all started at about 6 o'clock that morning. Hey, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store. Today we're talking about the Canon EOS R8. This is a full-frame camera from Canon. It's compact, it's under $2,000, but it's loaded with features. Now, we're up way too early today, and you promised me some kind of crazy <laughs> adventure. I don't even know what's involved for today, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a little foggy right now, but <laughs> we promised some awesome stuff, and so let's go and check out this new camera. All right, Evelyn, despite the fog this morning, we made ourselves down to Frank Lake, which is a great place just outside of Calgary to photograph birds. Yeah, you love this spot, and it's going to be a great test because one of the headline features about this new camera is that it has a 24 megapixel sensor that's found in the R6 Mark II. It's fast scanning, and with the electronic shutter, you can get up to 40 frames per second. So we want to test this. We also want to try out the autofocus features because it promises to be the same type of autofocus technology that's also found in that R6 Mark II. So I'm looking forward to it. It has automatic scene detection, so I'm going to set it for birds and animals, of course, but I'm going to see if it actually recognizes is which subject we're looking at automatically. We found some birds! Yay! <laughs> we found all kinds of exotic <laughs> seagulls and Canada geese here. Yeah, well, it depends where you're from. Maybe you'll find them exciting. Dave's not that thrilled. If you come down here during the spring, it's way better and there's a lot more exotic birds here. <laughs> Yeah, well, for our first stop today, we want to talk to you about some of the things that we're most excited about with the Canon EOS R8, as well as some of the limitations. So one of the things that people are talking about, of course, is that 24 megapixel sensor. So that's the heart and soul of any camera is the sensor. It's what's capturing the actual image. And this is a 24 megapixel sensor, same one found in the R6 Mark II. And we like that because it's a great sensor. Yeah, it's able to achieve the 14-bit raw images, and this sensor is fast scanning. So it's giving us things like that 40 frame per second shooting speed and some of the video specs that, again, we'll talk about a little bit later on. But yeah, we're really happy with the image quality. I mean, Canon produces beautiful colors. We like the sharpness that we're seeing, especially with the RF lenses. We're using quite a variety of lenses today on our little road trip, <laughs> but we're just loving the nice combinations. Well, the one thing I like about these modern cameras is the ability to shoot really high frame rates, like 40 frames a second is insane. You'll love it when you have to use it. Now, as with so many modern day cameras, we are seeing that they're doing away with a mechanical shutter. We do have an electronic first curtain shutter and we have fully electronic, which gives us that really insane fast frame rate. Yeah, and they're doing this because it helps keep the camera a lot more compact and less complex in terms of the mechanisms inside of it. But there's some nice benefits to, instead of just using electronic shutter, having that first curtain electronic shutter will give you better dynamic range. It also prevents banding and rolling shutter. Yeah, the electronic first curtain also gives us the ability to sync our flashes as well. So we can go to one two hundredth of a second for our sync speed when it comes to shooting flash. Now, Dave, I know you're very excited about the 40 frames per second, <laughs> but that's only great if you have awesome autofocus. Now, super happy to see that Canon actually is putting the same type of technology that we're seeing in the R6 Mark II. Now, in the last few years, Canon has just propelled themselves <laughs> in the autofocus technology, and we're super happy to see how well it does at tracking things like birds, like we're doing today. Yeah, what I'm finding as we take a look at some of these examples here, so we're tracking the birds in our frame, it locks on so accurately and so yeah. quickly, even if the birds are very small or a small speck in the frame, it can track it very accurately. So shooting with longer lenses like this 100 to 500, it sometimes it's tough to keep the bird in the frame, but the camera finds it instantly when you find it. Yeah, I'm also really enjoying that we have this pre-burst mode for raw mm. shooting. And so we've had a couple instances where, you know, the birds are taking off and this will actually give you some shots before you press the shutter. Mm. And so you're able to hit those fleeting moments. I am seriously loving the autofocus on this. It is actually doing an awesome, awesome job. And one of the other little features that I think is kind of neat is you have the ability to select your subject in a group. So whether it's a group of people or a group of birds, a flock of birds, you can actually tap on the screen of which bird you want to focus on and it's going to track on that one. And so you can toggle through the different subjects. Now, as much as I'm enjoying the 40 frames per second and that really great autofocus system that the R8 has to offer, what I am noticing is that the viewfinder isn't quite 
quite as nice as we step up. It's a 2.36 million dot viewfinder, so not as nice as the R6 or beyond that. And using the rear screen on a bright sunny day like today is challenging at the best of times, but this particular LCD screen is only 1.26 million dots, and it's not as bright as I'd like it to be, so I'm not using it very much at all except to explore the menu system. I am using the viewfinder primarily, and it's working decent, but I wish it was a little bit higher resolution, but I have to remind myself, this is a $2,000 camera that's giving me that kind of performance with autofocus and frames per second. Where are you dragging me off to next? Okay, so we're gonna go to Nanton. Nanton? Which you know is home of the Nanton Night Rodeo, which uh. I really like, but right now it's still winter time. <laughs> um, I wanna get some fresh coffee because mine is lukewarm from this morning. Um, but yeah, let's go to Nanton and check it out. Excellent. As you can see, we made it out to Nanton and we're hanging out in front of a couple of the last standing green elevators in Alberta that's accessible right off the highway. We also had a chance to check out the Bomber Command Museum of Canada, which is a great place to check out one of the few remaining Lancaster bombers that still fire up and run, and they do that once a month. Dave and Drew were highly excited <laughs> to go in there and see all that we're stuff. We're coming back. We're going to have to come back. but. This camera is awesome in low light, and so we were able to test out the performance and get a good feel for what it was like. Because the EOS R8 shares the same sensor as the Canon R6 Mark II, we know what to expect when it comes to the ISO capability. And I'm really happy to report that it's fantastic. I mean, we love the ISO capability out of this. I'm routinely shooting up to 6400 ISO without really blinking an eye. Yeah, and we were shooting inside of the museum. Pulling detail of the shadows was no problem. It's not very noisy. And so I could definitely see this being used as a great event camera, you know, weddings, birthdays, anytime that you're indoors and you don't have great light to work with, it's performing great. The other thing that we didn't mention earlier is the more manageable file size. I mean, 24 megapixels is, it seems like on the low end nowadays, but it's fantastic. It's most what most people need. They don't need that high resolution, 61, 71, 81, whatever. We don't need that high resolution for most people's needs. 24 is sufficiently adequate. Plus, if you're blasting away at 40 frames per second, you're not filling up the hard drive quite as much. Yeah, now one thing we are going through though today is battery life. <laughs> we have to talk about this camera in terms of battery life, because this is one thing that you sacrifice. You're definitely gonna have to buy extra batteries, especially if you're filling up those memory cards, shooting high frame rate, shooting a lot of video. We've gone through a couple of batteries today already, and that's because we have the <laughs> LPE17 battery I have to check. Yeah, it's so one thing compared to the R6 Mark II, you're getting a much higher battery capacity. But again, buying batteries isn't that big of a deal. We always harp on this, but you just need to get some extra batteries. The other thing to mention is that where the R6 Mark II has a dual SD card slot, which is very nice for redundancy, the R8 only has a single card slot. So that's something to factor in if that's an issue for you. Yeah, again, like this could make for professionals a very capable second camera, but if it's something that you're purely relying on, having that one card slot might be the limitation that's gonna be a deal breaker for you. I wanna talk about some of the things that I'm personally noticing today when shooting with this camera. I, I like it more than I thought, and Canon always does a good job with their ergonomics. It's the same as the Canon EOS RP, and that was their smaller full-frame mirrorless camera that they released a few years ago. Now that camera, as well as the original EOS R, is getting pretty long in the tooth, but I'm glad they've maintained the form factor with a few adjustments. The power switch is on the right-hand side, which I'm getting used to, and it's nice that we have the easy switch between photography and video. Now I like that this camera camera does have a touch screen that is very interactive. You're able to go through the menu selections, you can do autofocus selections, and Canon's always done a great job with their interface. I think this camera is really well designed and laid out that someone that's a beginner to full frame photography will enjoy it and be able to experience something that's easy, but then also be able to grow with it and get into manual control too. Now with that, we have two command dials. So we have one on the top and one on the back of the camera, and it's great to be able to adjust your exposure. Now as I mentioned, when we were talking about autofocus, I am missing having the joystick on the back of the camera just for some autofocus selection, but people that are used to touch screens, I think are gonna still find that this interface works quite well. This camera does have some weather protection. It's quite durable. And there are a few other things that I know Dave is a bit annoyed with this camera. Don't tell him, but I've set up something where we can actually go to a place called the Rage Zone. Where are we going? Um, <laughs> well, I think it's better if you just wait till we get there, because I feel like if I tell you, you will not want to come. I'm hearing banjos. <laughs> I'm like, where are we? I know, if we, if we see the barn, we've gone too far. <laughs> oh, no. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, this really happened.
for it. Go for it. Watch this. <laughs> so, what did you think? You know what? I did not expect that as my surprise at the end of the day. And thank you so much for organizing that. I'm yeah, feeling so well, much more you. relaxed now. Yeah, I don't know what it is. This is a rage zone, <laughs> and uh, this is a rage box. You can check out their website. We'll put the link below. But we had a lot of fun smashing things and yeah. filming it and shooting it. Uh, Drew, what did you think? It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to get into some of the video stuff. So, why don't we get Drew over here and, uh, and we can chat? So with the Canon EOS R8, we were testing a few different video modes. What was kind of the main thing that you were noticing? The 180 frames per second was pretty awesome. I mean, slow motion just in general, especially situations so like fine. this, looks so cool, like smashing glass, all of like the debris, uh, that one little light bulb that you smashed on there. It wasn't really little, but like yeah, yeah, all of that stuff killer. looks so cool with uh, slow motion. Yeah. And I mean, the 4K60, still looks amazing. I mean, it's the same thing as the- We don't have the camera. Uh, oh yeah, where's the camera? So you still have oversampled 4Ks direct from the full readout of the sensor. Yeah, uncropped. Uncropped. You still have 180 frames per second in 1080p. It still looks all amazing. Yeah, and we're happy to see that we have a lot of the same kind of video features that make this a great compact package. So we have the fully articulating screen, we have the ports that we like, the headphone jack, the microphone okay. jack, and we also have HDMI, but it is micro. Micro HDMI, of course, we would always like to see full size, but you know, frankly, I don't mind having a slightly smaller port because it needs a smaller body overall. And it is a really small body. It uh, is, yeah. One thing I was really surprised about was how little I didn't notice in-body stabilization mm -hmm. actually coming into effect. I shot a lot on the 70 to 200 and the 100 to 500. Uh, admittedly, the 70 to 200 was mostly on tripods, but even then, uh, there was basically no real issue with any sort of like vibrations or anything like that and shooting freehand 100 to 500 barely noticed anything so we're also good and then from an autofocus perspective what are some of the things that you were seeing with the new autofocus features took us a little bit to uh, fully get everything working the way we wanted to but once we did the touchscreen uh, interface where you can select the different subjects was really interesting i personally didn't use it a whole lot because the screens kind of not as bright as I would like it, especially. Yeah, we've had a lot like of bright, today. sunny conditions yeah. today for sure. So, I mean, selecting from there on the screen, bit difficult. Mostly found myself using the viewfinder, which was totally fine. Still very easy to track. The days of me complaining about, you know, optic viewfinders versus digital viewfinders is pretty much behind us at this point. I was having no problems tracking birds and things like that. Yeah, no, it is relatively cool out here, but we didn't see any specific overheating issues nope. with what we were doing. In fact, our biggest issue today was just we were playing through batteries. We really were. The E17 battery, I mean, 4K 60 and 180 frames per second, they're power hogs in general. I went through on the GH6 at least one full battery. So, you know, those kind of formats do drain uh, power pretty quick. But we do have USB-C yes, input. We do. And so there is the possibility to utilize that. But thank yeah. you so much. I'm glad we're able to smash some things together. Yeah, totally, it was fun. Well, Dave, I hope you enjoyed our little road trip that we did <laughs> in our own backyard, just outside of the city. You know, it's been a long day, but a great fun day. And it ended up smashingly good smashingly good <laughs> and now here we are back with a nice fence behind us roads on our horizon enjoying this nice golden light here <laughs> yeah but the most important thing is we got to experience the canon eos r8 and get our full review of what this camera is really all about now what i'm finding is that this is a lot of technology and a lot of performance packed into a very small bundle yeah, we're impressed to see that they've kept a lot of the technology, a lot of the features that we saw in the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, but they've put it in a smaller package and it's at a more affordable price point, just under $2,000 for this full frame body. Now there are a few compromises from shooting with the R8. You only had a single card slot. You don't have as high resolution viewfinder. The buffer isn't quite as big as if you stepped up into the R6. But if you look at what this camera is designed for, I mean, this is a great travel option. It's very okay. small, but if you come across a scene you need, 40 frames a second, you have that ability. Absolutely, even for professionals, I think this would make an awesome second body. It's gonna be able to do the trick. It's gonna be able to keep up with the work that you need. And again, getting into the full frame lineup at this price point and be able to save some money maybe so you you can afford the awesome <laughs> RF lenses. I think that this is a great combination. Yeah, we're also seeing that they didn't skimp anywhere on video. So it's yeah. fantastic that way. Yeah, definitely. This could be like an all around, you know, content creator camera, something that you could do for both purposes. But of course we want to know, what do you think of the Canon EOS R8? Does it check all your boxes? Do you think it has everything that you'd want for this price point? Let us know in the comments below. Is there something that's a deal breaker for you? For instance, the battery or the single card slot? 
Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon from the camera store. Get the picture. One of my favorite places to shoot birds and some wildlife. It's a great place for birds. <laughs> and wildlife. There you go. Little f***er. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian and you want to shop local, check out thecamstore.com down here.